Hi, Pamela. And hi, Mary. Welcome to the Mentors Parlor. My name is Esther Moshiri. Once again, I apologize for the late start, but this is the space to be every Tuesday evening at 7.30. Very excited to always hang out with all of you to delve deep into matters that are affecting us as a people in this country, things that really speak to our hearts. Today, we are very, very excited to have our very own Pamela, Rita Muni, who has been taking us through some very soul-searching sessions. And today, uh, the topic that she will be speaking to, together with a guest speaker, is something that I believe all of us somehow have, uh, have an experience with. It may be at a personal level, it may be a friend, it may be, I don't know who it is, but it's something that I personally take it very, very close to heart. And Pamela, thank you so much for choosing the topic of addiction. And so I will allow you to continue with the session now, introduce our guest speaker before we get to the point of sharing our presentation. So over to you, Pamela. Sorry, we can't hear you, you're muted. Sorry about that. Good evening, Esther. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining. It's good to see the mentors on the parlor. Mukuhe, Hash, welcome. Um, I think today is very special uh, because we have been uh, talking about this over and again. And I think we really wanted to hear from an expert um, in the issues that have to do with addiction. Uh, for those of you who may not know, this is as a result of um, a conversation that um, uh, one of our mentors had with the young people just when COVID struck. And um, some of the things that the young people want to hear um, is just really how to, uh, to know that someone is addicted to something. And we also observe that addiction is actually um, as a result of um, idleness, you know, COVID-19 uh, pandemic has brought um, a lot of changes. People have lost jobs. Uh, people are not able to go back to school and things like that. So um, as we get into this conversation, I believe it'd be a beginning. Uh, Esther, what I've realized is that addiction is a very broad topic. And uh, to speak to us today is Mary Kanja. Uh, Mary Kanja is uh, a psychologist. Um, she will tell us a little bit more about herself, but what I know about her is that she has worked in rehabs before. Uh, so she has an experience. She knows exactly what that feels like to walk alongside someone who's struggling with addiction. She is also a PhD student um, of counseling at uh, Pan-Africa Christian University. And that's where I bumped into her one time. And then I got to know her through a mutual friend. Uh, so Mary Kanja, you're welcome. I know I did not do justice to your intro. Uh, you can tell us a little bit more about yourself. I really hope you have your video on. Would like to have a look at you as well. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's one of our policies at the Mentors File. I would like to see you. If you're welcome, say hello, and then you can... Um, you know, resort back to the uh, slides as, as we go along. So come Mary and uh, let's have an engaging session. If you have a question, feel free to chat on the side. And when we have an opportunity to engage, uh, you can raise your hand when we have the Q&A. So over to you, Mary. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Mary. Oh, you can hear me now, Pamela. <laughs> Yes, we can, yes. yes. You can? All right. We can hear them. Okay. My house is a bit dark, but that is, yeah, we are, our lights are a bit dim. All right, no problem. I, yes, I think Pamela has done a lot of introduction. She has said whom I am. And probably it's just personal detail. My name is Mary Kanja. I am married. Uh, God has blessed us with two or four adult children, one girl, three boys. What I do every day, I am a marriage and family therapist. 
I also do, I'm a clinical supervisor. Clinical supervisor is supervising those who are actively on the field doing counseling. And then um, I do family mediation. That is partly what I do, church ministry. I am a Sunday school teacher, teaching class three and four. And I want to thank Pamela for inviting me in this Zoom meeting. Yes, and I hope we are going to learn a lot from it, all of us. Every session, every, th every time is a time for learning. And so uh, maybe, I don't know how many we are, can I have the honor of seeing your faces? Then you can unmute your videos. Okay. Uh, we have about 11 participants currently. Uh -huh. And uh, we'll expect a few people, a few more people to join us. Yeah. yeah. And, and when you're ready, kindly give us the cue to share the slides as soon as you're ready. Yeah. I think I am ready. You can start sharing. Esther, you're ready with the slides? Oh, you, I thought you were doing it from your end. <laughs> there you go, Mary. I have taken the liberty to put them in a, in a different flow, but still flowing the way you had presented them. So go ahead. Thank you for improving on it. Today we are going to do an introduction to drug addiction. Pamela, I cannot see it. Okay, good. We are going to do... Okay, great, great. This is what you have, Pamela? Yes, uh, Mary, I think uh, like Esther just alluded to, she just uh, maybe uh, made a few changes with the background, but it's exactly what she sent us. Hmm, I think there is a lot of confusion because this is not uh, what I am e expecting to do the presentation. Maybe I can try to do it from my end. Yeah, it is this one now. The earlier ones are the introduction slides. So this is introduction to... Okay. Then there was that particular slide. And then that is what you have. Uh -huh. uh, yes. The next time we are going to, to do the notes before when it is not too late. Today we are going to do to know more about drugs. And if it were an open forum, we would have talked about each one of you. I know you know some, some of these drugs. So it is not your first time to learn about them, while others, it is your first time to do it. And this, the drug addiction is a big problem to everybody. It is a global problem. Even adults, children, uh, uh, children, youth, everybody is having this problem because if one of your, of your loved one, if it is your child or your husband or your wife is addicted, it affects the whole family. And so that is why it is important for us to know more about these drugs. So what is a drug? A drug is something that affects your body and drugs pass through the body and interferes with brains, neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters is the way your messages, neurons exchange your messages. Um, so it affects the way your messages are transmitted it also affects your mood. It affects a lot of, it, it just changes the way you usually are. And it makes you somebody different. Because at that time, when you have taken the drug of your choice, whatever it is, you are no longer the same person. You are on high. That is what, why people say that you are experiencing a high. And at that time, at that time, you have lost control of yourself to the drug. So <clears throat> probably the drugs a long time ago, people have been struggling with these drugs from a long time ago, because as you, you can see from my notes, drugs have been part of our culture since, I can say since the beginning of human, humankind. Although what it, it is now, people are losing control, they are not taking them in moderation or the way it is supposed to be. Because you realize there are some people who have been, for example, if it is alcohol, there are some people who have been uh, taking alcohol and yet it has not been, been affecting them. 
because they they have been taking it in moderation but when you take you tend to take it in big quantity or in large doses then you have a problem can we move on next slide safadali oh there are so many types of drugs that are listed here are the most common ones these ones you buy them over the counter and you can see <laughs> i have skipped this one now i'm on the next one pamela uh, the, the way you had done it and as you can see the other one eh? the common type okay let me move us this one you have shown these are the most commonly abused drugs and most, what is commonly abused here in kenya is alcohol and then we go to marijuana and then the prescription drugs especially if the prescription drugs especially if you are having like depression or maybe mental illnesses you really get addicted to your drugs because they make you feel feel very good and then we have inhalants inhalants you you take them through your you are you inhale them through your nose and maybe the, the a good example for the inhalants you can see the children on the streets sniffing glue that is a very good type of an inhalant alcohol you know what it is there are many types of alcohol and it is readily available i have seen even a 7 year old being addicted being an alcoholism an al alcoholic and i i discovered her it was even a girl in church the, then we have heroin and cocaine these are a little bit expensive and yeah our days they are readily available you can get them at the corner of your estate wherever you are living and we have the common ones like coffee cigarettes you see tea and even tea for example i know i'm addicted to tea and some of you are addicted to coffee because you cannot function well unless you have your your good cup of tea or your good cup of coffee and if you don't take this once you have a, a very very bad headache that is called withdrawal symptoms but we we'll learn about that as we move on the next slide yeah these are the estimates these are a little bit outdated but this is the available information i was trying to get the latest information from nakada but kenyans you are very bad at keeping records so an estimated of 108 million people internationally consume illegal drugs so as i i, I, I said in the first this is a global problem the most commonly used illegal drugs is marijuana this is globally marijuana but when we come back home it is alcohol according to the united nations 200, uh, 2008 world drug report about 3.9 of the world's population between the ages of 15 and 64 abuse marijuana that is why it is called it is commonly it is it is it is recorded as being the commonly used but as i keep on saying alcohol in our context is the most abused drug okay let us move on yes then you wonder why do people use drugs we have many reasons for this the first one especially for the youth is curiosity you just want to know how does it taste how does a smoke feel how does that alcohol feel down your throat so it is about curiosity and then the second one that is not here that is commonly used is socializing or peer pressure is not here peer pressure this is because everybody is doing it so why can't i do it so you find yourself doing it because everybody else is doing and that is uh, that is peer pressure and then we have socialization many people in their homes when they are having gatherings or when you are having like family gatherings or chamas in your home 
you find many people are serving alcohol. And so that is socialization. So when, as you are doing it and everybody is merry, sometimes that is how you start getting now the taste of alcohol and knowing it is good. And even so the worst part of it, as you are doing it, your children are also taking what you have left behind. So most of the children taste alcohol at home or during these socialization gatherings. And then we have very poor self-esteem or self-image. You realize that you need to do something to fit in your community. You need to do something to fit in your class. If it is their young girls, they need to fit. So what you do, you take this to feel good and to forget about your poor self-image. Then we have anger, anger issues. You find yourself now taking alcohol or drugs is a form of escaping your anger. Instead of dealing with it, or instead of looking at the source of what is causing your anger or dealing with your anger, you run, you, you get addicted, you get into drugs. Then we have rejection. Rejection is maybe a child at home. You can be rejected by your friends even when you are an adult, you feel you are rejected. Even your family, your brothers and sisters, you feel you are being rejected. So you kind of get into, it leads you to getting addicted. Then I am doing, I, 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 I do caregiving. There is a, a group of caregivers that I mentor. And then most of them are saying they are taking drugs because they are not able to cope. They're overwhelmed with, with their responsibility. So is they, they find themselves just getting into hitting one for the road, others just smoking whatever is available to make them kind of forget what they are going through. Then we have inaccurate information about drugs. People tend to, to highlight the highs of the drugs when how you feel good, the euphoria. So when you get this wrong information, you kind your curiosity or your appetite is whetted. So you want to learn more. You want to test yourself and say, I think I need to test this and see how it feels for myself. <clears throat> so there are a lot of there are a lot of causes or a lot of reasons why people take drugs. Like inaccurate information, people used to say when you are on drug, when you take bang eh, or marijuana, you tend to work very hard. Others say that if if you're not performing well sexually, if you take alcohol, then you perform better. All these are wrong information or inaccurate information about drugs. So you find someone getting addicted because of trying to solve a problem. This is a very poor way of solving a problem because at the end of it, it get, when you get hooked or you, when you get addicted, you are going to be, people say that once addicted, always addicted, but that is a bad slogan. Although it is there, it is, it is said a lot. You can hear when you go to a rehab, that is what people say, that once you get addicted, you always be, you will always be vulnerable to whatever the drug of, the drug of your choice. Can we move on? Then there are risk factors. You wonder how come in your group everybody is taking and it is only you who is getting addicted. Number one, it is your makeup, your genetics makeup. Maybe you are, they predispose you more into getting addicted than mental health. Mental health, you know, it is stigmatized in our context. Nobody want to talk about mental health because as the youth would say, we may cheesy, we may knock, all these things. So you find somebody to, just to make yourself forget about, even if you are not reasoning well, you can find if you are, maybe you are going to, into depression, you try to emit the depression. You, know, you want to get a high so that you can forget about the mental problem that you are going into. Then uh, family and social environment disturbances. When you talk about family and social environment, our days, especially the people who are living in, in a, a kind of a village setup, or a very congested place, you realize that things like alcohol and even these drugs are sold openly. 
So you, they are, that this is what we are saying, social environment, they are easily or readily available. So you find yourself, you don't struggle. They are just around the corner. And then the effects on the brain. This, as I said before, when you take this, you are no longer going to be the same again. You have destabilized the way God created your brain to perform. And so for you to, to normalize, you find this taking these you, you, you take these drugs, you, you destabilize the way your, your brain function. So you find yourself, you are in a high, you have to take your drugs to go, you, to, you, you want to maintain the high feeling, so you keep on taking more drugs. So it is affecting your brain and you are not going to listen the same anymore. You are not going to be the same person anymore. The next slide. So there's a lot of um, difficult uh, terms, but abuse drug causes a surge level of dopamine in your brain, which triggers a feeling of pressure. This is what you call a high. You feel like you're on top of the world. So changes in your brain interfere with your ability to think clearly. When you take these drugs, it inhibits your ability to think clearly. You don't make good decision or concise decisions. Uh, and so you, you are prone to, do, to be doing a lot of, of, of messes because it has changed the way you are thinking. You cannot exercise good judgment. If it, when, and this is very dangerous, especially if you are driving <clears throat> or even your work, if you are using things like hammers or sharp objects for your work, if you are working in a, in a factory, because this is how people lose their limbs. You find because you are not making a good judgment, you have swerved your hand, or because you are not good, making good judgment, you are high on drugs. When you are driving, you find yourself causing a lot of accident and some very fatal. Then your brain, your brain, it takes control of your behavior. You are no longer the same person again. Your behavior changes. And for the parents who, who are listening or siblings who are listening in this forum, watch out for a behavior, for a change of behavior. If your sibling, your brother or a sister, you see the behavior has changed. You know you know them and you can easily say the behavior has changed. For example, they can be sleeping too much or eating too much or getting withdrawn or talking too much. Something, a slight change in behavior, be warned that something is not going on well. Then feel no more without drugs. You cannot feel no more without, when you get in, into drugs, you cannot feel no more again. You take drugs to feel normal. And now that is now that shows that you are in danger zone. Taking drugs to feel normal, that is very dangerous because you are not yourself without the drugs. The next, the next one. So physical warning. If you are a teacher, if you are a parent or an elder sibling, please look at these telltale signs. The eyes, when you see blood, bloodshot eyes. Yani, ni kama mutu wa kwa jicho, the white part is all red. Uh-huh, that is what you are talking of, bloodshot eyes. Pupils larger or smaller than usual. You may find somebody squinting. You know somebody has a perfect eyesight, but suddenly they are squinting to look at things. Changes in appetite or sleep patterns. This you are sleeping too much or too little. You can find somebody sleeping from morning. They have slept during the night and if you do not wake them up in the morning, you'll find somebody still sleeping at around, somebody still sleeping during the day. And even at around four in the evening, they are still in bed. Sudden weight loss or weight gain because of the, the patterns of the appetite. Appetite controls the weight your weight gain or your weight loss, deterioration of physical appearance. This is you becoming unkempt. You see somebody who used to be very neat, they are no longer 
they don't care how they look like they don't care about their hair they don't like they don't care about the shoes they are wearing and that so that is deterioration of physical appearance then because they, they are they are losing weight they kind they kind of look haggard huh? unusual unusual smells of breath you find somebody is avoiding you if you are a mom or a teacher watch out somebody can, does not want to be near you why because they know their breath is thinking their breath smells partly because of what they are taking and because of their reaction with the with the with the in the body the smell the bad smell and because of their hygiene also they are forgetting to brush their oral hygiene then we have impaired coordination this is how you see somebody wobbling in the road or not really sure where they are stepping they are walking like they are stepping on a cloud and yeah, they, they they feel like it's like you 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 lift your leg so high thinking there's like a a hill something or a, a step but then there isn't so they have impaired coordination and this is one this is how the walevis or the drunkards or we call them drunkards and that is a that is how you detect that they are there they are using drugs then we move on so how do you know behavior warnings poor work performance if you are doing your work our employed for those who are employed you realize you are having difficulties meeting your deadlines if you are a student you can hardly finish your assignments on time decline in performance in every area of your life you cannot perform as you used to for those who are singing or maybe you are in church whatever task you are doing you, you there is a decline that is clearly visible by everybody everybody can see you are slackish you are not performing as usual then we have financial problems drugs are very expensive that habit is very costly habit to to maintain so what happens here financial problems so people can start even stealing the young people if you are a mother of a parent or a aunt staying with a young person you you start finding things disappearing in the house something that has been there for ages you have not even you know you don't even think more about it suddenly it is missing you count whatever else it is missing so you find because of the financial problems it also uh, people start stealing and that is why you find like uh, in a states that uh, drug is high drug intake is high there is a lot of crime people don't just they don't just steal for the sake they want to sustain their they, they want to sustain this uh, the use of of whatever they are taking secretive behaviors you know hiding you don't want people to know what you are doing so you do it hiding and then sudden changes in friends and associate you don't want to hang with your old friends because they know you so much and they ask you questions and you do not want to answer these questions so what do you do you you change your you, you start now associating with this new kind of a group that you have realized this is the group that now you are that is matching you the group that you are taking the drugs together accident or trouble prone that one i have already explained even at home accident is not only a road accident at home because sometimes you don't see clearly your visual is in, your 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 visual is impaired so you are not seeing what you need to be seeing lack of motivation and with the drone hmm? nobody they are not nobody is excited anymore to do what they used to like doing It, this is almost like symptoms of depression so they are no longer motivated or they are withdrawn because of the the effects of whatever they are taking then unexplained anxiety when the drug is wearing out in the body you find somebody is very agitated or anxious eh? so you if you cannot explain if you are taking these drugs yourself and you are finding yourself really anxious for nothing know that you are headed in the danger zone and it is high time you call for a, a friend or you talk to somebody else we can move on <clears throat> and this is all the things that we have talked about poor judgment slow reflexes you are somebody is kind of stiff distorted vision 
you can no longer focus. Memory loss, if you find somebody really struggling, uh, for example, if you are meeting me for the, uh, you already meet me, then the next time you look somebody, somebody really, you can remember the face, but you keep on wondering the name. So there is this memory loss, sometimes very minor, sometimes very elaborate. Then you find people who really do these things so much, they, they can black out. You find somebody blacking out, and this is very dangerous. This is how abuse starts. When somebody blacks out in a pub, and somebody blocks, blacks out, probably. So for those people who use matatus, you have seen somebody who, who really, it is like they have lost conscious in a matatu. They, have, they don't even know where they are headed. So blackout is very dangerous. And it, it, is, it is a sign that you are reaching at the top. You are reaching, you are almost hitting your rock bottom. And uh, yes, let's move on. Oh, it has finished, okay. So these are already the statistics we have talked about, about the number of people who have used illegal drugs. And because these statistics are from the Western, that is why they cannot, some, some of these cannot be a true representation of our context because we, 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 we live in different worlds, but when it is cocaine, it means it is cocaine. Even in Kenya, where you are, where I am, it is cocaine and it is very, it affects every drug, the, all the drugs that we have talked about, they have different effects on the brain, they have different effects on the, on the body and cocaine seems to be the worst of them all and it is the highly take, the, the one that people have taken more because Global illegal drug use is, an expect, is expected to rise by. It is already risen because this was 210 years ago. Be assured the next statistic, this one has changed a lot. We can move on. Yes. And after you have done this, before you get to, to now testing drugs, before you get yourself into your curiosity, before pacifying your curiosity, you better think twice. Think, think twice, because all these drugs, the effect of the drugs is targeting your mind, targeting your mind. And from the Christian perspective, you are told to guard our mind because the, our mind is we, you are what you, what you think that is who you are. So remember to say no. Before, before you light, you take that, that kibiri tea, that matchbox, you want to light up a smoke. Before you take that glass, even one is addictive. Before you take, you take that, you know, there are so many drugs that they are not listed here. When you go, uh, when, when working in rehab, you realize there are so many, like Kubel, before you take that tablet, before you take that leaf of Mira, because even Mira is not here, before you take even that bit of Mira, before you chew it, please think twice and say no. Because if you don't say no, drugs are not your friends. They are going to take you and destroy you. And this is partly what, this is drug addiction. There are so many other kind of addictions that uh, that are there, I have listed some of them, and some of them you are struggling even yourself because addiction is not only about drugs. You can be addict addicted to your mobile phone. You can see people texting when they are driving. You can be addicted to mobile games every time you are doing, you are doing your, you are, you are playing games on your phone. You can be addicted to food. You can, be, every time you are really eating, <clears throat> then you can be addicted to sex. Uh, I, I have seen many people struggling with, um, yeah, I, I have seen many people, even Christian, struggling with sex, especially masturbation. I have seen many, many, many people who come to counseling room, they are also struggling with pornography. So these things are real there. And then how do you know that you are getting addicted? I don't know, the first time you did your fasting, you know, the first time you fasted, 
your mind could think of nothing else but food. So the stages of knowing that you are going to be, you are getting into addiction is that you cannot think of anything else apart from, from this addiction you are addicted to food. Even you are thinking about food, you are thinking about some people, the phone is part of a, your extension, your hand extension. You realize you, it is like you cannot survive without your phone. Every time you are checking, you are, I don't know what people do with, with phones. I had many, I had intended to show you a lot of pictures. For example, when people go up country to visit their, their parents, they are all on phone. When a mother is breastfeeding, she's on phone. And these phones are causing a lot of accidents. Uh, they are also causing a lot of family separation. Because when you come from home, I come from, when you come from work and I am from work, instead of even finding out how we have been, all of us and, uh, are just engrossed into our phones. I am on family and sub that time I was struggling with my children, they were at home, and I realized it was easier for me to text them. If I text them, I would get a prompt response rather than calling. So one thing that we are missing is face-to-face -face communication when you, all of us are getting addicted to our phones. And face-to-face -face communication, when you are talking to me, looking at my face, you realize maybe my eyes are swollen, my eyes are red. So when you are getting addicted to your phone, you miss a lot of all these things we are, we are talking about because you cannot even observe somebody's behavior. So uh, the phone is the king. In the current generation, the phone, the phone is topping the list. And I know some of us are struggling with the phone. It used to be the TV, now it is no longer the TV. And you see the phone is a very, very personal gadget. You are into your own world and everybody in the house, for example, if you are four of you in the house, you're all over the world and the other person next to you, you're not giving them the attention they require. So there are many types of addiction and they are all, they, some of them have worse effects than others. Yes, and we all need to be careful because the Bible tells us to do everything in moderation. A phone is very good. It, it is very good, but when you use strongly, it gives us a lot of problems. Some drugs are very good, even like cocaine or marijuana. Some of them are used to, as painkillers or as treatment for for psychiatric disorders. So when you take them in moderation, they are all right. But when we tend to overdo these things, then we get ourselves on the wrong, we, we get ourselves addicted and we keep on struggling. So I think I, if there are any questions or any, any, any observation, this is a good time to do that. Wow. Mary, thank you so much. That was detailed. And uh, just listening to you talk about some of the things that indeed have become addictions of late. I know when we talk of addictions, the first thing that come to mind is, is the drugs that we take or the alcohol. But you have touched uh, this last point of phones. And I want to speak to you about or maybe to just ask a question now that we are in the COVID season and you know we now have no choice but to connect with these electronic gadgets do you think that COVID perhaps has made addictions increase especially when you think about technology addiction or even drug addiction what's your take for me I can say there is a silver lining in every dark cloud. Mm -hmm. <laughs> COVID for me as a marriage and family therapist, although it brought a lot of chaos and a lot of addiction, it kind of brought people back together. Mm -hmm. And so for, for, for addiction, yes, it made us go back to, there's a good side of phones and a bad side because now it is through our phones that we can have a conference global you are wherever you are you don't even know where i am mm -hmm. and yet you are fulfilling the same purpose yeah. however if ev everything needs to be done in moderation mm -hmm. 
-hmm. if it is talking type of if you're doing a conference you are not every time in need so you need to as a family you need to come together and say this is family time let us keep off our phones okay and uh, um, um how how would you speak to parents how how do you approach a child that you think is getting addicted to any kind of addiction how what's the trick of getting them to open because today i was listening to a, a certain video that is circulating on social media of a mother that was crying because her son committed suicide because when he was in school he was sodomized and he never told anybody and so she had to bury a son at the age of 20 and she herself went through depression because of the pain that it caused her and she wished the son had spoken to her. So what would you say about parents noticing and also on the other side, how would you advise the youth who are listening to us at this parlor about opening up and speaking about things that they probably are going through? And maybe as you answer that, I want to invite the people now in the parlor, it's time for us to engage with Mary. If you have any question, any comment, please raise your hand or type your comment in the, in the message and we shall address it. Over to you, Mary. Thank you. Uh, about getting somebody who is on getting addicted, one thing they're in denial. Most of them don't think they are really getting addicted and they're in denial. And for a parent talking to parents who are here, if you're not keenly watching your child, you may never know they are, they, are, they are doing this because one thing they'll tend to hide from you, when you get in, they get out. And taking into consideration what you are talking about phones, the, 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 the child is in, in his or her phone in her room while you yourself in your, wherever you are in your phone or in your laptop. Most of us are carrying work home. We are working from, home <laughs> and so the problem of working from home we go overboard so we are ever on our laptops the other person is ever on the phone so the first thing is you need to be this is what i was talking about covid bringing us together if you realize if all this you have done and you have really realized that your child is on drug or getting addicted number one it depends on your friendship how have you been relating and by the even if you have been elating, well, there comes a stage when they, they put you like, ah, they put you, they put a stop sign off for you that this far you can only come this far. So it is good to, to have mentors. And I saw this a good forum where you can, <laughs> your child can talk to somebody. They prefer to talk to people they don't, you know. That is how counselors are now getting popular because. I can give there's a there's a there's a child who because she, he is my my cousin's son he was sent to me because the mother thought he was on drug but for me I knew he would not open up to me because he would think I'll tell the mother so what did I do I sent him to another counselor who he doesn't know and he opened up so the best way of from my experience your child can never unless you are very close they don't admit they don't admit that they are taking or they are on drugs. Even if you catch them red-handed, bado itakuwa, see me, me, it wasn't me. And you have caught that thing be under their bed. And then you as a mother, why don't you find, be very close to your, monitor your child, not suspiciously, but just to make sure you can observe when they are changing. Their bedroom is not of your body. If you get to your bedroom, you get to know a lot. So for me, that is what I can say. And for the lady who lost the son, uh, it is very, very unfortunate because I, I listened to it and I could hear the struggles. Sometimes the parents, we think when we buy everything, the latest gadget, the latest, we put a very fast Wi-Fi in our house. Then we think our children are very happy. No, they still need us. They are rebelling against us. They are pushing us away in, in them. It is like they don't want, they do not know what to do. So it is upon us to know it is good for every parent to know a child therapist 
or a psychologist who they can refer their child to, immediately you notice there is a change. Or even your pastor, if they, they can open up to a pastor, whoever they can open up to. Because silence is the one that is killing us. We just keep quiet hoping everything is okay. Then we realize our children are committing suicide and then we wonder what we did wrong. And for you, I said, if you know, if you're here and you are getting into addiction, the way you know that you are getting into addiction is when you feel that you cannot do without whatever it is that you are using. Whether you feel like you are thinking about it. In the morning when you wake up, you are thinking about it. In the evening, you are thinking about it. And by the time you are realizing and you want to leave, it means you are so much deep into it. So it is also good for you to go for help. Just walk into a counseling room or go. There are many even, I realize like in the government, government hospitals, they are doing counseling for free. Like mother, I took that boy to mother and he got help. Not mother, not in the hospital, but there are counselors there. So let us know as parents, let us know the, the places where our children can get help from, help so that we may not waste a lot of time trying to cause them and they are not opening up and time is flying. You, you realize school is on, school is off. So you have no time to relate well with your child. I hope I have answered your question. Yes, you have. Thank you very much. I want to open this up to more questions or comments from the, the people in the parlor. And I want to invite Mukuhe, who is one of the mentors at the parlor. Uh, Mukuhi, if you could kindly comment or at least uh, ask a question, because I know you have been a youth mentor for many years. You probably have uh, come across some of the issues that uh, Mary has raised. What's your take on it? Um, thank you, Esther, and thank you, Mary, um, for, for that good presentation. Um, you know, what, what can I say? I think you've said it uh, pretty well. Uh, maybe what um, what was going through my mind, and I think Esther alluded to it, was around. So how can we support? You know, how how can the parents be more aware and you know increasing the awareness of the of of that um, involvement with with um, the youth? So I think for me, what what I have um, maybe from a bit of maybe my experience is, I think it's getting involved. You know, especially now I, I would be talking to. Uh, parents, it's, it's getting involved to a higher level. You know, sometimes what I've realized with this COVID time, engagement is in different levels. You know, there's that engagement of just checking somebody, have you done your homework? Have you not done it? But I think what it calls is that increased engagement in terms of up to an emotional level where we are opening up. I think we need to be more open in the discussions we have with our, with our um, young people young people meaning you know the whole age right from teens all the way to um the young adults so that then um people are free to talk and when we talk i think um you know it will demystify maybe a lot of the struggles that may even lead to some of these re feelings of rejections and and feelings of um i'm not good enough you know because yes just feelings like you're alone so i think that part of, I think what this opportunity that it is giving each and every one of us who's here is actually to be involved in each other's lives, you know, to, and, and, you know, to, to have less, um, can I say secrets or hidden things, you know, you know, closets. Sometimes you just think just because it's, you know, you think something is very private, but sometimes when you get out, you see, ah, it was only me who thought it was, um, you know, it was affecting me. It's perhaps all over the place. And sometimes it's more obvious. Some of the, for example, some of the addictions would be so obvious, you know, like maybe an alcoholic, you may notice, but there could be somebody struggling with something else. So I think it's that maybe to demystify by becoming more involved, more sensitive, more gracious. That's what I would have to say. Thank you. I, I like that, getting more involved and... Uh beyond the usual how are you and when you're told fine you you know you just feel like you have had a conversation you know that reminds me of something that we are trying to encourage our parents and mentors to do 
by saying that of the minutes that God has given us, if only you can give 14 minutes and 40 seconds of quality time with your child. So when I say that it's per child, per youth that you're mentoring, that's 1% of your time because we all have 1,440 minutes. So if you can spend quality time, that's, that's good time to have a nice conversation with somebody and get deep into it. And then it's not a one-off. So if you can, we can try and have such conversations throughout the day, every day, try and connect. And I think in a way, those things will open up. I can see, Pamela, did you want to say something? I've seen you've typed something in the chat. Uh, she's typing um, in how to get connected with your children. Mm -hmm. Okay. It is very hard for children to sit down and you talk one on one. Mm -hmm. Because they tend, they, you know, it is good to, to, to look for something that is you are naturally doing yeah, together. Mm -hmm. If you are baking, you can say today's mom and boys. If you have boys, like you say moms and boys day to cook. Just to make something very exciting. So if somebody is cutting meat, you ask a question there. Somebody is rolling chapati somewhere. You ask a question and slowly by slowly you realize that. In this not so official setup, mm -hmm. they are opening up or you, you get to hear their stories and know where they are at. The 14 minutes can be maybe, yeah, you take them maybe, you do an activity together. I find even when we are counseling you that when you are doing an activity, a lot of information flows out of them than when you are just sitting on chairs and talking. So true. So 14 minutes can be a long time. So it has to be spread throughout the day doing something. And uh, this, this number we, we identified after so many young people said they don't know anything about their parents. Mm -hmm. So you even ask, where do your parents work? They don't know. Have you visited their workplace? No. So really, there are no conversations at home. So just an encouragement of how much time can you spend with your child? Even if 14 minutes look very awkward and you're looking at each other. I like what you're saying. Engage in different activities. Ask them to bring a broom and you do something together or go out and do something. It, it creates... Uh, a bond, but at the same time, as you say, conversations actually flow and you get to know quite a lot of what is happening. I, I want to see if we have a young person in the parlor that can say something. Brian. Uh, and we also have Cliff after Brian. No? Sorry, I have too much uh, a cappella in my background. That's okay. So I'm avoiding speak. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. Brian, what can you say about this topic of addiction or something that Mary has said that has touched you as a young person? And I know I'm picking on Brian because I know you are going out into the community, you are assisting some children homes in Kawangware. And maybe these are some of the things that you might encounter, you know, young kids that are getting addicted because of their environment. Unona kama hii discussion imekusaidia vipi? Just feel free to share anything. Okay. Hello everyone. Mambo. Wasana. Uh, what I can say about the what I can say about the topic is good because many people in the community that I've talked to have have gone to the children's home and the young children now fought us because the drugs to come easily. We now see children say watch out drugs in the Oshida. Na lazima to me and baka malo kama ni ni kama riab. Na wezi wacha, hino nasema wana tumiendo, at least wapate ngugu ya kuwa pali. Wanajabu kubaka kupatua chakula, kwenjua ba training, but ayeze kari. So watu unayena kuwaona huko, tunawangia na mwenye moja, na inakuwa saa, but drugs na wani kisabu kweli, ni challenge kwa mayotu wengi, kila maali. Jota mini, some years back, mi kama, tuwa nine, I was a victim, but iliacha kabisa, na wani kwa saa kabisa. Kuliendaji ukaacha, nanyi ya likusaidia? Ah, personal decision. Because I saw the group that I was with, I kwa nisaidia. Mbe nika mua kuchenchi, nika achana na yu group. Nika form another team. Ana adesi niko sawa kusaburu. Timu niye, na wangalia katubadu wa kukua drugs, but minje ni chukua ni personal na niko sawa saa. 
lakini inaonekana hauku addicted kwa muda mrefu labda ulikuwa umeonja tu ah 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 to 9 mpaka 2010 ile kwenye nishika kwenye nishika ile tu ile niliangalia iskoyani niangalia nyumbani wale family nikaangalia nataka kusoma ile vision niko nayo kwa na yeye hiyo opportunity kiacha saa hii itakuwa itakuwa mbaya nikaamua ku make personal decision hata sikwambia mtu nikaanza kujitenga polepole kujitenga 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 finally nikaachana na kabisa na nikaingia life yangu sasa wow thank you for your testimony of what you have done mary what do you have to say about uh, brian i want to congratulate him for making up his mind to follow the right way and i can say sometimes living addiction is by the grace and i see the grace in abundance upon brian's life <laughs> keep encouraging your 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 fellow youth some of them are deep in it and they are not able to come out ah uh, is that that you see at kwacha ndio shida ni ile wataki kwacha company ndio kutowacha company ndio shida so kama uko na company ile ile daily in day out uwezi wacha lakini ukichange company utakuwa sawa they want to fit eh yeah, to fit in wow asante sana there was someone else that uh, pamela you said who who are you nominating to say something oh i was uh, talking about cliff but i think he dropped off at some point but yeah. i can see none other but wafula nabutola is on the <laughs> platform so you can talk to us <laughs> what can i say i just joined I found just came back so family reader give me instructions uh the instructions are very simple wafula nice to have you and i am glad you are done with your ugali and chapati and and the nuts that you were having for dinner and we have a fantastic guest that has been speaking to us her name is Mary Kanja who is a who has a huge uh do I call it cv and experience in the areas of dealing with people who have addictions in different areas of us, either drugs or alcohol or any other addictions that she has mentioned and uh, she has taken us through a number of slides that have opened our eyes and now we are having a, an open discussion on our own experiences of dealing with people with addictions or how we cope with it or even sharing personal testimonies like you listened to Brian talk of how he made a decision to stop so i don't know as a mentor if you one of our mentors in the pala what would you say and what is your experiencing or your experience working with the young people and maybe how is it in bongoma kuna bangi ama kuna kwa sababu kosa bangi bana hapa sisi although we don't we can't match the people in from binyore but we we are quite up there but i have my own personal experience when we were in high school second form uh one of those break times you know in high school you used to have break around 10 10:30 and uh i saw some guys going behind the the toilets there and they lit up and i followed them and i did the same and uh what perhaps is let me not be judgmental here all i know is that when we went back to class mr sam magangi now professor sam magangi gave us a math test and for the first time i actually completed it you know very rare that i finished i actually finished the math test acha marzalt is good i had got 13 200 okay 13 and mr magangi was very categorical he says full i'm giving you this because of the ink <laughs> so baptism by fire you know it was like eh hapa nitelezi you know and i had to check myself how i have this is not really the way i want to go luckily for me okay on the other hand i must say a sort of felt guilty that i would have done that you know uh, to my mom to other people who matter to my dad but also it was fun when i was taking it you know 
when I, I inhaled that thing. Eventually, by then, it led to me smoking cigarettes, which is a story for another day. And I stopped for another reason. But this one, that 13 out of 100, has never, ever got out of my head. Ever. So to me, um, that was my experience about that. Then there are younger people. When I go to fourth form, there are younger men, younger students in second form. I, still, I know their names, some of them. I won't name them. But they, they got addicted to it. And as we are talking today, I meet some of them in the city of Nairobi. Well, now not here, but... And two of them I see that totally wasted. Totally. And I, I just don't know how I can intervene because the, if, if it's a matter of age, we're about the same age. Maybe they could be two, three years younger than me. Mm -hmm. But, you know, maybe they're fathers if they're that rude. But it's a difficult thing. It's a big challenge. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot of guts, a lot of uh, love. Let me also use the word love. People who are willing to accept you mm -hmm. as you are. People who are willing to say, yes, Ofula, yeah, we, you're into this thing, but we do not want to patronize you. Mm -hmm. uh, but we know the consequences. We know some of the outcomes, mm -hmm. and they're not pretty. Yeah. I was saved by basketball. Okay, apart from the 13, <laughs> 13 out of 100, something told me there's a game here that you'd like. So I also played the game, and that sort of eliminated any other you know, um, attractions, because I was busy, I was sweating, I was keeping fit, and, and, and sort of replaced any other vices that could have come as a result of that. Wow. Mm, that's, that's me. Thank you. That, that's, I think 13 out of 100 is a really, is a real blow, and I'm imagining maybe you are a, a bright boy in school, then getting 13 in mathematics, you are like, who is this? And I think these are the kind of testimonies and uh, stories that we want to share at the parlor of our own lives, our own experiences, and also the realization that we can actually get out of addiction. It is a personal decision of cutting ties with people that you know are taking you in the wrong direction. I am looking at the time because we have 10 minutes to go, but I want to give people an opportunity to speak Carol Machine is one of our new mentors at eMentoring Africa. Carol, do you want to say something about this issue of addiction with the youth? Um, thank you. Mine is probably just a comment. I'd like to thank Mary. Uh, the, the session has been so informative, so enlightening. And I, I think what, what struck a chord with me was the issue of mental health uh, not being really understood in our society or getting the attention that it really should. Um, for, for, for me, I come from a background where we have battled with mental health with very close family members. So I have seen uh, what depression can do, what you're talking about in terms of someone being in the room the whole day, not wanting to get out of bed, just the warning signs. And, and, and being at a point where we didn't know where to get help, or we didn't know what we were dealing with, first of all, and not knowing where to get help for our loved ones. And that was a, a, a place that was, was a very scary place to be. So uh, it's nice, it's such a blessing to get to know someone like Mary as a go-to person or someone that, you know, you can refer to in, in a very tangible, in a realistic way, because then I wish I knew Mary then, or you know, I had this platform then, I would know where to run to. But I think about how many people out there, how many young people are suffering from depression, and the family members don't understand that it is, it is a condition and that they need help or where to go and get help from. So I look forward to more sessions like this, and I, I pray that this will become available to people out there just as a point of knowledge and reference point that there, there is help and there are people who can, who can reach out. So thank you, 
uh, e mentoring Africa. Elizabeth, thank you for this platform. And Mary, thank you. God bless you for what you're doing. Amen. Wow. Thank you so much, Carol, for that. Uh, and we say in the parlor that every, every person has a scar and we learn every day. And we have a, a slogan, thanks to Wafula and Abutola, of Koto, no one teach one. So we, sometimes we will get large numbers in the parlor, sometimes they are few, but ours is, if we can change one life, if you can pick the contacts of Mary and within your networks you come across young people who are addicted or who are going through issues, then at least you have made a contact with Mary and together you can go and make a difference. And that to us is enough impact. And so we thank you for joining us and we look forward to you joining us every Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. And please bring along as many people as you can. It's open and we have different topics every, every Tuesday. We try as much as possible to send out our posters to advertise on the topic for the next Tuesday. But just put this link in your diary because the link doesn't change. So thank you for joining us and unless there's someone else who's really, really burning, I want to give this opportunity to Mary to wrap it up and uh, give us her closing remarks and last words of wisdom that we can take to bed and uh, maybe pick up and give to somebody tomorrow when we wake up. Karibu, Mary. I really feel honored for this to be part of this platform. And I thank the Lord for, for even your comments. What I can say is <laughs> drug addiction or addiction to other things, we need to be on the lookout physically, spending, as you have said, purposefully and looking at somebody or putting our phones down or putting our, our laptops to hibernate so that you can go. When you're talking to somebody, you are talking to them, looking at them so that you may see whether they are changing, and they will have an opportunity to tell you. So let us have that free flowing conversation in the family first. So that because we, we, we keep on saying that there's a like saying that goodness comes from the home, going out or there. Eh? Jesus in the inside, working on the outside. So that, that concept we can apply it in our homes that if we better our homes, we have good relationships. All this boils down to good communication. And all the things that I have shared there, they are just tumbling blocks. They make you, they make sure. I, I was telling somebody, technology is good and bad. It is, it is used by the devils to make you scattered. So let us be very careful, not to waste too much time on our own, to know that even other people, especially the family members, they need us. And then in this era and time, Especially now I learned that you are mentoring. I can see mentoring Africa. It is good to know some few places where you can refer somebody to. When somebody say, oh, I want to commit suicide. Can you handle that? No, you can refer that somebody to. Oh, I'm struggling with this. Who can you refer? So you guys here, yeah, the mentoring, the mentees or the mentors, be a store of knowledge, be knowledgeable, and have a lot of contacts so that you can refer. You may not be able to do it, but at least you can point somebody to, to somebody. So for me, I say, keep up the good work you are doing. It is not in vain that you can spend all like an evening hour here trying to, to do something. So not for your own benefit, but for others. And may the good Lord reward you for the good work you are doing. Thank amen you. and amen and amen. I now want to invite our main uh, host, lead speaker, Pamela, if you could kindly give the closing remarks and maybe close for us with a word of prayer. But as you come on, I want to recognize the presence of Sagao Clearance. Pole Sagao meingia darasani kama tuko karibu kumaliza. But we have recorded the session and uh, hopefully we shall have it ready for your access from our 
YouTube channel. So if you can, all of us, if you can all go to the eMentoring Africa YouTube channel, you'll find all the past recordings of sessions we have had. But Sagao, uko salama lakini? Sagao clearance, can you hear me? Yes. Uh... Yes, good evening, everyone. I'm, I'm well. I uh, thank God. Uh, and sorry, I ran late. We, we reopened schools. And so <laughs> that is why I had to run late because I was doing a few boarding matters with the students. But I'm well, and I thank God. Uh, I hope we enjoyed the session. Thank you so much. We did. Thank you so much. And Karibu uh, Sana, but we shall catch up outside this. Pamela, over to you. No worries. Thank you, everybody. Um, that was great. I've actually learned a lot. And uh, Esther, I don't think we have a choice. Uh, we need to have several of this um, in the near future. And um, I like what the young man said. I like uh, what he said. He said that uh, he actually got to a place where he had to make a decision to just do things different. So even as we wind up today, I want to encourage us all to take time and um, just have time to think about your life every ever so often. If you cannot do it every day, you can do it once a week. You can call it thinking time. You can call it meditation, whatever it is. And just uh, retrospect and look into your life and see how did it go this week? And what did I do wrong? What can I change? And some of those things. Uh, will bring up uh, things that we need to work on because it's we are in, we are in on a journey, all of us. Uh, nobody is perfect. I like what Esther said, that everybody has a story. Indeed, everybody does. So thank you very much, Imentaring Africa, for hosting us. Thank you, Mary Kanja. Short notice, and you just delivered. Uh, that's passion. I, I really appreciate that. And thank you, everybody, for coming on board. So we're going to pray briefly and call it a night. Have a good night. Enjoy the rest of your week. And let's stay connected. Let's keep networking. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for yet another time you've given us to be together. And as we uh, take our leave, we ask that you bless each and every one of us on the platform. And our prayers and our hearts really go out to the young people out there who are struggling, grappling with things. Some don't know who to talk to. I pray that you cause us to be connected and to be, uh, you know, places of solace for them, even as we direct them to the greater good and as we direct them to God, the Father, who is our source and who knows us and who is able to minister to us in a we know human being can be with us and dismiss us with your blessings. In your name we ask. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Amen. So you can all unmute and say good night. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Uh, Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. Good night, everyone.